smoker. It'll be electric and it'll run off wood pellets or wood shavings. I'm using pellets. So what happened is I had a dishwasher that died. Uh, it's all stainless steel inside. There's no plastic. So that's why I'm utilizing this instead of my small Bradley that only heats at the back. This one here, the plan is to have it heat right from the top to the bottom. We want even heat throughout the entire space. So we have a heating element in the bottom. Uh, just got started. So our dishwasher is mounted. We built the frame. It's all on wheels. It still has to be insulated and covered in cedar. So as you can see, we have our electrical outlet. This will be wired into a PID controller for temperature control. And we'll have temperature sensor inside for the temperature, which will be right in the top. And we will have also external sensors or ex external monitor that measures the meat temperature inside so we don't have to open it up once we start. We've uh, gutted the dishwasher. I moved the two racks up so that uh, we can use that for hanging our, our stainless rods on for our meat. And this here is going to be for our smoker tube, which I'll show you here in a minute. And I have fabbed in an oven element. So it's a 220 volt element, but I'm only running it on 120 volt. Uh, it doesn't get, it doesn't seem to affect it too much. We still have ample current draw and we're getting up to 200 plus degrees with no issue. So that's what we're going to go with. We have a uh, mounted a heating element in the back and it pokes through the back, same as an oven does. And we took the drain out and we fabricated a, uh, just a steel, plain steel uh, plate to fit in there and screwed it in. And that's our air inlet as well. So what we've done for our air inlet, just go down and show you, is we've put a, a damper in here so that uh, when liquids, if liquids make it down, they'll drip out. We're gonna have a tray below here. But also for drying the meat, we've incorporated a fan. So that fan will blow against this plate and up through the smoker. We have built with some stainless steel mesh. So I didn't want to buy one because they're about $40 here to have delivered here in Canada so I built one out of stainless steel mesh and I'm using Traeger pellets and put them in there and that full we're getting about six hours of smoke which is good enough for what I'm doing and I can always reload it. So the next thing that we've done is we took some half inch pipe just skid 40 pipe and it's welded and affixed in so this here will just slide in as such so our slate bricks, we had just raw slate, that's all it is, it's just straight slate, slate it's not treated. Those all go in. So the reasoning for this is so that when our oven element is heating, it's heating at a nice even, it'll heat their stone up and we'll have a nice even heat going up. We do have a two and a half inch damper up at the top. So our two and a half inch dampener has been drilled in and this here is our temperature sensor. That'll go to our PID controller. So here we built the chimney stack. We've cut out some metal and used some high temp silicone and pop riveted it down and we'll put a damper in later. All right, now we've got to the part where we're insulating. So we've used fiberglass inf insulation, it's R12, and we've completely encased the dishwasher on all sides, just one layer thick top even the bottom has is mostly done uh, we did sheet it in with some sheet metal as you can see just to clean things up a bit and keep stuff away from anything else but it's ready for sheeting we are now getting sheeting on we're using cedar it's cut about a quarter of an inch thick and we're just resawing boards to put on there and as we move up we'll trim it out when we're all done so we have finished getting all our cedar siding on and we haven't finished the trim yet. Uh, it's on all sides and still it's just sheet metal on the very bottom. Uh, we did leave the cord, we pulled the cord out just for temperature reasons for the electrical. We didn't want it all the way inside so you can see we poked it out the back. Terminals are all available for servicing. On the top it's all sheeted in and we did leave an access port with the screws. Split a bit of wood there but that does give us access to uh, service or change the temperature probe. So for the door, we replaced the top. We had a one by six on there before. It's replaced with cedar. We had to leave the bottom open just for the door to open properly. And we built this latch. This is actually a part for building weightlifting equipment, but it's just a half inch spring loaded pin and worked out quite well. 
So the door isn't very heavy. It is fully insulated. We added more insulation to the door just for temperature. Uh, the probe barely pokes through the screen, as you can see, and it's a quick, easy latch to use for opening and closing. So we finally got our damper installed. It's just a piece of sheet metal with a quarter inch bolt and some nuts welded to it. We put a spring in to keep tension on it and we keep the handle in line with the damper itself. You can see the sheet metal just cut on a circle with uh, bolts, sorry, nuts welded to the inside and that's how it all functions. When you get to the front of the thing, everything's trimmed out and now varnished. So you can see it shined up pretty nicely. We will be adding a drawer down here to hold the drip tray and the pellets for smoking. And just more views of the sides with the cedar to complete it. So we did have to make one small change and that change was we got rid of the slate tile out of the bottom. Albeit a good heat sink, it was taking close to an hour to heat up. So we've since removed that and put sheet metal in. As you can see, it takes about 12 minutes to get up to 74 degrees Celsius. That's about the temperature we're looking for for smoking meat. So we're going to try that. First batch of pepperoni will be going in tomorrow. Stay tuned. We'll let you know how it works out.